I remember there was a sign on the on the Die Hard wall mm -hmm. in the office that said, "Beware the toes you step on today, for they may be connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow." Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to kiss that ass. Never forget that. <laughs> How you feel about rolling around town seeing yourself on these big old billboards? I don't see that as myself. I see it as something else. You don't? Shell Obama, the other Viola Davis. You tell your work wife that your actual wife said to stay out of our family business? I don't marry the two, because otherwise it's too difficult. <laughs> it's difficult to what? It was okay like a, to see myself like when I was a doing a play. Ah. Because it's different when you're doing a play. Well, that's, yeah, but that's it's, totally different, too. Yeah, it's yeah. totally different. So that was but, exciting. And yeah. you see yourself in front of the theater, yeah. you know, on the board. Well, that's you know? Broadway, though, because back when you were off Broadway doing stuff, like when I was doing stuff at Henry Street or uh -huh. at NEC, they just had the name of the play. They yeah. didn't have pictures. <laughs> There were very few pictures out front. That's because we're know, two different generations. Photographs. Yeah, exactly. I want to ask you about that. So when were you at Juilliard? I was at Juilliard from 89 to 93. Now you oh, aging I, me. I, I was group 22. Yeah, I was just about to leave New York at that time. I think Jungle Fever got me out of New York. Oh, so yeah. I was about to leave Wonderful. at that time. So the first time I remember seeing you was you were playing like this mean-ass cop on Law & Order. Oh, I love that role. You know, we all had our... Pass through Law and Order yeah. <laughs> phase. That was one of two shows that was shot in New York until they started shooting New York Undercover. And it when was were only you Law doing, and Order, the Cosby Show. When were you doing your Henry Street and Negro Ensemble? Uh, uh, what years were those? And well, who? we moved to New York Halloween night, 1976. We drove oh. from Atlanta to New York, and pulled into that Halloween parade down in the village. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh, what's going on here? And it was like, wow, this is crazy. Uh, and we were there during the, you know, 70s before you got there. Oh, know? yeah. Then and, uh, my stomping grounds were in the 90s. And when I got my first play mm -hmm. at the public theater, making $250 a week, I was like, it's a wrap. I've made it. Oh, man. I have yeah. made it. Yeah. So how many people from your pounding the pavement and going to audition days actually are people that we know now? Probably a lot of them. I know Anjanu Ellis was, you know, came out of NYU around the same time. I don't know. You go along in your career, and I never thought of the ultimate outcome. Like, I never thought, I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. I just, that, that's what I'm working on. You know, I want to work with the Steven Spielbergs of it all. I just went from job to job because I loved it. And it just sort of was like the, the notoriety was mm -hmm. just an overflow of the work. And now, I mean, you have so many actors now who are so intentional about yeah, where well, they yeah. want to end people, up. Which, people showed up to be famous. Ex exactly. Yeah, that was their whole intent. I don't really have any criticism of that. I don't want to be vicious well, about that. It's not that. a criticism. It, it's but not. It's an observation. But in the beginning, <laughs> I mean, there's a point when you first start doing it or that got your attention that yeah. made you say, oh, I want to be an actor or I want to be a movie star or I want to be famous. I mean, you have yeah. those things. And as you do the work, if you become a real actor, all that stuff becomes... Exactly. In the back of your mind, especially after I got sober, the mm -hmm. work became the thing. And I was yeah. doing, you know, Pulitzer Surprise when it plays, and, you know, you're fine. I did two original works at Yale, yeah. uh, two August, and then I did Soldier's Play mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. So it was about the work. Absolutely. And it became a byproduct of what happened. Absolutely. You know, I figured if I went to five auditions a week, mm -hmm. two of those jobs were going to be mine. Yep, I just exactly. had to figure out which ones they were. And exactly. I felt sorry for the other people that didn't hire me. Yep. You know, and keep on moving on. But, you know, mm -hmm. but that's what we did. You know, yep. and Latanya was like, well, why are you taking that piddling ass job? It was like, <laughs> well, it's two days on a movie and that person's going to be a big director one day and the writer's going to write other stuff. And, and sometimes that works out. Yep, even, absolutely. Even amongst, you know, PAs and stuff. 
Mm -hmm. I remember being, you know, being on set or 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 meeting kids who were trying to get into business as this, that, or the other, mm -hmm. and just being nice to them and talking to them and whatever. And you know, five years down the line, that person's a producer. Absolutely. You know, and they go, "You don't remember me, but you were so nice to me on that thing. I had to get you on this." And just like, like, "Thank oh, God." Wow. Thank God. That was nice to you. Well, you know, the, the fruits of fruits of seeing the right thing is like I remember there was a sign on the on the Die Hard wall that said, "Beware the toes you step on today, for they may be connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow." Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to kiss that ass. Never forget that. You know, it's like okay, this is mm -hmm. awesome. So yeah. I had a chance to like you know, you know, meet a bunch of people and understand that you know, watch. Certain kinds of actors do certain things that you say, I don't want to be that person, you know, because exactly. you see how the people react to them. Absolutely. Or, you know, some actors that are like so big that you look at and you're like, oh my God, it's, it's that so and so. And they were like so amazingly nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, sat and talked to you about the most mundane thing. And, you know, my big thing was doing 10 weeks of work in the theater because you did 10 weeks of work. When you went back to New York, you could collect your unemployment. Oh, yeah which was like $360 a week. I was like, I could pay my rent with that. And so I was happy. Yeah. And I got my health insurance. Mm. You know, for me, I'm always interested in actors, I'm going to use the big H word, mm. hum who are not humble. Mm. Because for me, it's a very humbling profession. I think about my entire career, and I'm like, I did a lot of crappy plays. Oh, well, and then yeah. I had some really good performances. Yeah. And the crappy plays, trust me, were not intentionally crappy. I just literally did the best I could. But depending on all the other elements that came together, you don't know how it's going to land. And a lot of times you're there helping yourself until you find that person that unlocks another little piece of this thing that will make you so much better than you used to be. Absolutely. You know, and like, a lot of times it's the role that yeah. unlocks you. Were you in a space where somebody would like get plucked and you knew you were in the right place. It's like when I was at the public doing Mother Courage, all of a sudden, you know, I was Morgan's understudy. Oh, and yeah. he got street smart, you know, <sighs> and it was like, wow, you know, Morgan Freeman, was like, <laughs> you know, or we were doing soldiers play and Denzel mm -hmm. left to go to do uh, St. Elsewhere and then he started doing movies, mm -hmm. you know, but he would come back and do the play when we were on the, in, in the touring company mm -hmm. when he wasn't shooting, he would uh -huh. come back and do the play uh -huh. and just hang out with us. And we were like, oh, and put them, out, Fish, out, you know, uh -huh. Wesley, out, you know, Alfrey, out. And you go, uh -huh. okay, I'm in the right place. It's just not my turn. Exactly. I had promised myself I was never coming here until they sent for me. Me too. Yeah, because I had too many friends that left for pilot season, came out here. <laughs> this is a finishing school. Yeah. It's not a place of discovery. Exactly. And for me, when I got seven guitars with Lloyd Richards, that was it. That's when I felt like I was plucked. Yeah. I really did. I mean, because what a blessing to have that man. Oh, my God. You know, when you come to rehearsal every day to talk to you about what you're doing or ask oh you what you're going to do different today. And I talk to young actors, and they go, what do I need to do? And I say, well, have you done a play? And then they look at you like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I mean, you yeah. can't learn to act doing scenes. Having done something from beginning to end mm -hmm. has been very, very useful in terms of this whole streaming service thing oh, that yeah. happens now that allows you mm -hmm. to take something that's episodic mm -hmm. and take the character the long road. Absolutely. Remember Jackie Kennedy? Her blood splattered pink Chanel suit? Her kids had to see that. Someone had to explain that to them, Barack. How does that help you wrap your mind or bring yourself into becoming a living person like Michelle Obama and what you had to do to get yourself in that place? to portray somebody who's alive and will watch you be them. <laughs> well, Sam, besides taking a good shot of vodka, here's the thing. It is very difficult playing a real life person, especially someone who's occupied the space of the White House, someone who could give an opinion that could cause a war, <laughs> you know? There is a shroud of, of, of protection, of liability, and as an actor, 
that is a nightmare. The reason is, is because when you enter into any character, you have to be armed with as much information as possible. Mm. And all of it, you know, not just where did you go to school, what do you drink? Do you love your husband? Do you fight with your husband? Do you fight with your kids? You know, what's your biggest fear? You know, when you go home, you know, all of those things that you can't get at. And so then you have to fill it in. And you have to fill it in for an audience who feels such an ownership of that character that they don't want to see anything mar the image. And that's exactly antithetical towards what we do. We need the mess. That's what makes us human. But here's the thing. Here's the other side of it. For me, to speak in the abstract, I think the one thing you really have to be armed with as an actor is courage. Mm -hmm. When you move through your life and you see human behavior, that is has to be put in your lexicon so that when you play a character and you don't see all the gaps being filled in, you have to fill it in with whatever imagination, what you've seen in the past from other people, what I know being a black woman with Michelle Obama, and you have to be bold enough to inject it into your choice mm -hmm. and go for it. That's all you could do. I mean, listen, I, I did it on how to get away with murder. It's like, okay, if you always ask why, right? Yeah, but Annalise, is, what, Annalise is yours. Here's the thing. If I died at 90 and you went to, I don't know, my sisters, people, friends, friends who knew me, mm -hmm. and you said, because I need to gather information about Viola. I want to play Viola in a biopic. I don't care how much information you get from them. You're only going to get 40% of who I am. Well, yeah. Where I live and mm -hmm. where I lie, some, a lot of who I am takes place in the private recesses of my mind. Mm -hmm. Things that I will never even share, even with my spouse. Moments that they haven't even seen. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just saying that even if you're playing someone in a biopic, you got to do the same thing. You have to ask why. And then you have to take a chance with it. Why, why is she angry in this scene? Well, she's angry because this man is pissing her off. Why is this man pissing her off? Because she doesn't like his glasses. Why doesn't she like his glasses? Because they were the glasses of this guy she dated when you know, she was in college. You know, well, why did she not like those glasses? Because the guy, you know, he did something to her in college and she never figured. But do you know what I'm saying? How do you He's keep your preconceptions of who we've seen her publicly or who we wanted her to be because everybody's got a different idea of who Michelle is and who they wanted her to be or the strength and the, the, the perfection of a first lady that we have for her that we don't have for other people or other first ladies. You're limited by the script. Uh -huh. Always a pet peeve of mine, number one on my list. Limited by the script. If it's there, it's great to play. If it's not there, you have to fill it in. And sometimes that's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Two, it's not my job to give you an image of someone you want to see. Yeah. It is not my job whatsoever. It's not in the job description. I, I was always surprised by this. If you are a painter and you, go to your, and you go to your house, you could paint a picture and someone said, oh, you're a painter, let me see your picture. I could show you the picture and you're a painter. You can't do that as an actor. I can't say I play King Lear in my living room, mm -hmm. okay? Because I need the writer, I need the director, and then finally I need the audience. The audience has got to come in locked and loaded for me to work as an actor, mm -hmm. okay? You're not coming locked and loaded if you come to the theater and you say, this is just what I want to see. Don't, I don't want to see anything else. I want to see that, this, and this, and that. Then it's not my job to make you feel comfortable if I'm doing a Marvel movie and doing something, absolutely, it's, that's my job. Mm -hmm. But it's not my job if I'm playing a real person. It's my job to give you the truth, to serve it on the silver platter, to make you feel those moments that you have in private that I'm bringing to the public. They may make you squirm, but if you recognize it, then I've done my job as an actor. Now, the other thing, I'm not, it's not my job to make you very comfortable eating your Diet Coke, popcorn, and Sour Patch Kids, you know? 
when you were doing Ptolemy Graves. I'm sure that that was your process, absolutely. Walter wrote Ptolemy in a specific way. And mm -hmm. I've been living with that book for 12 years or so. You know, I read it like, you know, once a year. I kept wanting to do it. By the time I had an opportunity to actually portray him, you know, yeah, I had a very solid idea of who he was. Even though Walter wrote it, and I would say, well, Walter, do I have to say da da And he's like, you know the book better than I do, so say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. And I had that freedom to, like, just go in there and make Ptolemy who I wanted Ptolemy to be. Mm -hmm. And I knew how uncomfortable, you know, the first episode would be, which is one of those things I was, I was talking about, being able to do it as a six-part series yeah. gave me the opportunity to expand on what I knew him to be. That yeah. gave me the opportunity to take my time and let Ptolemy breathe into people's lives mm -hmm. visually watching it. And I knew the first episode was going to be uncomfortable for people. People who have been touched by dementia or Alzheimer's and had yeah. to care for a, a person to have it or are living with someone who has it right now, it was not going to be comfortable for them. But I mm -hmm. wasn't going to run from it and try to make it easy for them. I just wanted them to know that it'll get better, yeah. but this is the reality of what's happening here. He's in this place, and when those people are alone or when they're sitting there and they're just staring into space, yeah, something's going on back there. You may not know what it is, and you may not be able to get them to explain it to you, but they're living in mm -hmm. this particular thing. Oh. You all right? Reggie really did. Yeah. Well, who killed him? Why do you know? It was bothersome for a lot of people. People said they had to stop watching the episode one, you know, and it's like, you know, hang in there. It's going to get better, you know, and I loved being him. And when people asked me what your favorite moments were doing it, it's like my, my favorite moments were being alone and being just me with yeah. with Ptolemy. Sitting there, you know, eating eating beans out of that can and licking the spoon and staring out the window and, you know, being in that space or mm -hmm. walking around and picking up something that, you know, flashes back that gives you a memory of something, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to be comfortable in losing myself in this yeah. person. You know, we yeah. we tend to do that a lot. You know, and yeah. I play characters that, you know, I know people aren't supposed to like and enjoyed it, like Steven and Django or something. You know, it's like, that's my job, to make you uncomfortable. People go, oh my God. I go, yeah, good. That's satisfying for us. Yes, To very. know that we did that. You yeah. Know, that you don't need to be comfortable watching me all the time. I was never always comfortable watching you as Annalise, but, you mm -hmm. know, there it is. Yeah. Speaking of, how do you feel the bouncing back and forth between the short form movie life and doing what you do in television as in a series, because I haven't had that opportunity. It's just like what you said when you have a series, you're just given an opportunity to grow a character. But my question though yeah. is, when you're doing a series like that, when you started How to Get Away with Murder, did you know the first season where you were gonna go no. to the end? So every week you come in and you get surprised, but you have to find a way to create a life that's connected in that way. Yeah, that's a challenge. Uh, it's, that's, that's, it, and it's a huge yeah, challenge. That's huge. My big thing is you're not always going to be put in the perfect situation as mm -hmm. an actor. That's why I'm always interested in the actor who says, I'm going to stay home until I get that Academy Award winning role, which is great. But there's a, a lot of times it's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You're going to get on set and all of a sudden you're given a scene. It's like, well, that scene wasn't even there last night. That scene changes everything. Oh, my God, what is Annalise doing now? She's killing another person. Why? Then you have to make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes certain characters you play are a great opportunity to experiment. Yeah. For me, with Annalise, I was giving an opportunity, especially as a dark-skinned black woman 
47 years old, she's sexualized, she's sociopathic, she's all of those things. It gave me a really big, bold opportunity, a vessel, to be an unpredictable, messy woman. Mm -hmm. When, for instance, if you see a white woman on screen, you could say, she looks like my mother. A lot of studio heads would say that. Mm -hmm. She looks, she could look like my mother, my sister, my aunt, the woman who I wanted to marry when I was in high school, but I didn't because I wanted to marry the blonde woman. You see the possibilities. That wasn't me in my career. Mm -hmm. My possibilities were the crack um, addicts, the, the, the mothers who were in um, challenged situations watching their sons die, the ambiguous lawyer or the judge, and I was happy to get them. Don't get me wrong, I, I was. I made the most of it. But this was the first opportunity I had to play a woman, yeah. okay? And it was in the midst of a melodrama. We can admit a lot of the situations were fantastical, but it was still my opportunity to boldly step out and make choices that could surprise people mm -hmm. and to make people see me, yeah. really see me as a woman. It was an opportunity to do that. Mm. And so that's how I saw Annalise. There were a lot of people who said, oh, she's been miscast, which I'm always interested in, you know, as an actor. <laughs> Because I'm thinking to myself, we're about people, right? How can you be miscast, miscast as a, a human? Yeah. I don't understand that. Mm. But that's how I saw Annalise. Now, in terms of movies and TV, it depends on the script. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. It depends on the script. But see, it's easier to sit at home and figure out what you're going to do from page one to page 135 than it is to come in and there's an episode this week that's about this, and then there's an episode the next week that's about this, and you not know what Shonda has in her mind that she's gonna throw at you, that you have to work the, the twists and turns of something to throw people off or to keep them coming. But you get surprised every week when you go, to, go in to read that week's episode. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shit, what? I'm doing this this week, what? You know, but it's not the ultimate journey. Right. You can't say it's the it's ultimate journey. You just have to know who you're playing. Yeah. Well, you, life you has can, to surprise mm -hmm. you the same way that, that character gets surprised Absolutely. by situations pop up that you have to solve a problem. That's or, where improv comes in, right? Because I did improv for almost a whole year in college. Oh, yeah. And Because what they say is you have to say yes to your partner, right? You have to and, circle back, though. Yeah. To the one question I'm sure everybody wants to know. So... When Michelle called you, did she tell you you got it right? <laughs> <laughs> did she call you and say, Carol, that was me? Mm. No conversations with Michelle Obama. <laughs> I don't do it. Yet. Oh, dang. Mm -hmm. I just said, like, yeah, well, you know. I just called and said, so tomorrow's I'm shooting this scene here, and they want me to do, well, what would you do? <laughs> so you had with to every, With every character you play, you're jumping off a cliff. You are, you know. It's I look like, forward to it. Yeah, me, you know. listen, I do too. You know, I make plans, you know. In movies, I movies, I can make a plan. Like I was asking you about doing a series, you can't really make a plan because they're surprising you every week with stuff. That's why improv ah. mm. comes in, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of free-falling and knowing that you've done your work, you've done your work in terms of who is Annalise, what are her memories, what are her dreams, what does she do, you know, what does she live for, all of that. That's all you need to know. The words and everything else are just, that's just there. But if you've done the foundation, that work of really exploring that, and here's the thing, you could surprise yourself even with that. Mm -hmm. Even with who she is. That's the thing that's hard, by the way. If you <laughs> if you said, you know, she's a criminal defense attorney. I'm just making, she's a criminal defense attorney. Then you show up one day that says, no, you're a prosecutor. Or you show up one day and they say, okay, you're eight months pregnant. It's like, wait a minute. Last season I wasn't pregnant. Right. So what happened? You had a fun you summer. Go, you got it. <laughs> you got to make it compelling. Yeah. You got to make a choice as an actor. See, once again, you have to have a process. Mm-hmm.